Hey friends, Ash here with Gent Sense, and today we're going to be going over the Fragrantica Reader's Choice Awards for 2019. So this is something Fragrantica has done for the past three years. They essentially have a bunch of different categories, and then you, the Fragrantica user, can go onto their website and vote on who you think should win in each category. And then they have a top 10 for each category with your winners laid out. I'm gonna be going over those categories and giving my thoughts on them right now. And if you wanna follow along, I'll leave a link in the description to the Reader's Choice Awards for this year. We've got a lot of stuff to go over, so let's jump right into it. Now in the best interest of time, because my channel is viewed by primarily men, like 96% men, I'm going to be leaving out the women's categories. So if you're a lady watching this and you wanted me to go over those, please forgive me. But if I don't cut some of this out, this video is gonna be so long. So guys, here we go. Best perfume for men 2019, the first category we're going to talk about. The winner for this year, Tom Ford Ombre Leather. Now, best perfume for men 2019, I guess you could view that a couple of ways. You could view that this is the best fragrance that was released in 2019. Obviously that's not what this is though because Ombre Leather came out in 2018. But this is what the Fragrantica readers say is the best fragrance that you can own, I guess, for the modern man for 2019 and that is Ombre Leather. Now Ombre Leather was originally released as Ombre Leather 16 in 2016 as part of the Private Blend collection, but then was rebottled and made more affordable and is now just Ombre Leather. It is though the same fragrance. As Fragrantica notes, this year our readers voted bold and intense fragrances to the top. Leather has been a favorite subject for years, shifting from harsh and spicy to light and casual. Ombre leather is in the middle. An easy to wear, bold leather fragrance. And I can get with that because ombre leather is very versatile. It's not all that difficult to wear, but at the same time, it does set you apart from most of the the ways that you would expect to smell leather in designer fragrances nowadays. Now let's quickly go over the top 10 in the best men's perfumes or fragrances for 2019. And interestingly, every single fragrance in the top 10 was released either this year in 2019 or last year in 2018. Number two, Blue de Chanel Parfum. Number three, Terre d'Hermes Eau Intense Vetiver. Number four, Giorgio Armani, Armani Code Absolute. Number five, Y Eau de Parfum by Yves Saint Laurent. Number six, Explorer by Mont Blanc. Number seven, Gentleman Eau de Parfum. Number eight, Luna Rosa Black by Prada. Number nine, Dior Sauvage Eau de Parfum. And number 10, and this is the only niche fragrance in this list, Oud for Greatness by Initio Parfums. So there we have it, the top 10 fragrances for men in 2019, according to Fragrantica. I do like a lot of the fragrances in this list. Some of them I think are better than others, but on the whole, I would say that's fairly representative for what is most popular just based off of the videos on YouTube and the views that those videos get. So none of this really surprises me. Next up, we'll very briefly talk about the best perfumes or fragrances that are unisex for 2019. The winner there, Coromandel Parfum by Chanel. That is a fragrance that has a lot of love, both by men and women. And one thing that you will notice with the unisex fragrances is that fragrances that are marketed as unisex, most of the time is going to be a niche fragrance or private line fragrance. In your more typical designer releases, they will choose a gender that they're targeting, men or women. Very often with niche houses or private lines, again, you will find unisex fragrances. And interestingly, Ombre Leather was number two on the unisex list and number one on the men's list. So obviously, Tom Ford Ombre Leather is extremely popular with Fragrantica readers right now. Now let's talk about the best niche fragrance of 2019. And yes, I keep looking down because I have this on my phone. This is way too much to remember, so I'm checking my phone. Number one, Guerlain Bois Mysterio. And that fragrance was actually listed as number four 
on the unisex fragrances for 2019. So obviously again, popular release with Fragrantica readers. And that's a fragrance that I believe Eugenius at You Smells Good would be happy to see as the number one fragrance. You've got Oud for Greatness at number two by Initio. Uh, that one was the only niche fragrance in the men's top 10. Then you have Nishane Ani, which is uh, very hyped. You see that on Facebook all the time. Great vanilla fragrance. Delina Exclusif, which is a Parfums de Marly feminine fragrance. And then B by Zoologist at number five, the newest release by Zoologist, which if I'm honest is probably the release that I've been most hyped about that they've ever done, but I've not smelled it yet. Now I'm gonna skip forward a little bit and we'll head to the biggest perfume flex of 2019. So if you buy this fragrance, then I guess that means you're flexing. Perhaps you're flexing on your haters. <laughs> but yeah, biggest perfume flex. Number one, Lost Cherry by Tom Ford, which came out last year in 2018. It was very, very hyped last year, and apparently that is still the number one fragrance if you're trying to flex. At number two is Dior Sauvage Parfum. Um, I don't know if I really consider that a flex necessarily, but a lot of you out there did. Uh, Dior Sauvage Parfum, of course, was one of the more hyped releases of the year just because it's a Dior Sauvage. Extremely expensive in terms of designers at retail price. Uh, for me personally, I think it's the best smelling of the Sauvage line, just in terms of my personal taste. But then uh, the performance off my skin is not on par with the Eau de Toilette or the Eau de Parfum. Number three, Office for Men by Fragrance One, which is of course Jeremy Fragrance's fragrance house. So Office for Men is in the top three in terms of flexing. And then rounding out the top five, you have Joy Intense by Dior, which is bottled to look essentially like a feminine Dior Sauvage. And then at number five, you have Aventus Cologne by Creed. So again, we're seeing some consistency throughout the top tens up to this point, 2018 and 2019 fragrances absolutely dominating. Now we head into the best men's perfume or fragrance of all time. Now, I'm not going to look this up right now, but I believe that this fragrance that won this year also won the last couple of years in this same category. I could be wrong, uh, but if memory serves, it either won or placed right near the top. But the winner, is Dior Homme Intense as the best men's fragrance of all time. There will be a lot of you out there that disagree with that. There will be a lot of you out there that can maybe agree with that. I would say there is a bit of recency bias there. There are obviously a lot of extremely important fragrances that came before that that I would say were more important on the whole as for what they meant for men's fragrances in general. But Dior Homme Intense is a great fragrance in my opinion. I've loved it for years and years, so I'm not gonna take any shots at your own intense. It smells awesome. I've said this a number of times, but it's one of my top tier formal fragrances for men on the designer side of things. I think the quality is very high. The performance is great. Uh, it smells awesome. Then at number two, we have Terre d'Hermes. And what's interesting about Terre d'Hermes is every time I mention Terre d'Hermes on this channel, there will be somebody out there that says, Terre d'Hermes is terrible. That's the worst thing I've ever smelled in my life. How can you put that in any list? How can you ever mention Terre d'Hermes? It's the grossest thing I've ever smelled in my entire life. And while it seems like I'm exaggerating there, I do get comments that are like that anytime I talk about Terre d'Hermes and how I like it. And yet here it is at number two on the best men's fragrances of all time, according to Fragrantica's readers. Now I'm just kind of poking fun at people that say that. I know that nine times out of 10, they don't mean it in any kind of ill manner. They're not really taking shots at me. They're just saying they hate the fragrance, but it's funny to see how divisive Terre d'Hermes is, where you have some people that say, my God, this is one of the worst designer fragrances I've ever smelled. And then you'll have just as many people say, man, this is an awesome fragrance. This is a classic. This is a masterpiece. Terre d'Hermes seems to be one of the most divisive designer fragrances that is held in generally very high esteem that I can think of. Next up at number three, Dior Fahrenheit. I love Fahrenheit, not gonna argue that. 
Number four, Creed Aventus, which is referred to by many people as the king of niche fragrances for men. So again, can't really argue the placement there. Number five, Lana Wheat de Lome. Lana Wheat de Lome, extremely popular. Uh, Jeremy Fragrance really helped that along even further than it already was at in terms of popularity. Dior Homme Parfum comes in at number six. A lot of people out there prefer that to Dior Homme Intense. I think it's an awesome fragrance. Number seven, Tom Ford Oud Wood, another great fragrance. Uh, number eight, Encre Noir by Lalique. That is one of the highest quality fragrances in terms of scent profile to me for the price because you can pick that up in the $20 range in the US from discounters, quality through the roof if you like dark vetiver fragrances. Number nine, Bleu de Chanel, which started off in earnest, the whole blue wave of fragrances that we're experiencing now. And that number 10, Eau Sauvage by Christian Dior, 1966, the Eau de Toilette. That one, I uh, can't argue that either. I've actually talked about that a number of times on the channel, think it's a fantastic, classic, men's sophisticated, gentlemanly kind of scent. So that was a quick run through of those. Best niche fragrance of all time, Andy Tower, Tower Perfumes. L'Air du Desert Maracan. And I know that was terrible. I'll just call it LDDM. That is an amazing fragrance. I absolutely love the way it smells. It really transports you to a Moroccan desert with this warm wind blowing through a spice market kind of vibe. It smells fantastic. I was a moron years ago, maybe six, seven years ago. I sold my bottle and then immediately regretted it and bought it again. The fragrance just smells so amazing. Even if I don't want to wear it supremely often, I'll still bust it out and spray it just to smell it because it's that good. And I do wear it on occasion as well, but that is one that if I lost it, I would definitely replace it because I've already done that once. Number two, Tobacco Vanille by Tom Ford. Some people out there will argue and say this is not a niche fragrance because Tom Ford is a designer. Uh, he makes clothes, he makes handbags, he makes all kinds of goods. And the people that say that are the ones that say, if you make more than just fragrance, you are a designer. It doesn't matter the cost, it doesn't matter the exclusivity. And if you make only fragrance, you are niche. So there would be some argument there from some people saying tobacco vanilla is not a true niche fragrance. I take the stance personally that if it's a very expensive fragrance, it's a very exclusive fragrance that's meant for a particular niche of person that's going to buy it that it's a niche fragrance in the sense that Dior's private line or Chanel's or Tom Ford's all these different private lines are niche fragrances that's how I viewed it though I know a lot of people will disagree with me and that's fine I'm just kind of throwing it out there that I understand some people are going to say that is niche and other people will say that's not niche and this whole thing is kind of up for debate uh, you'll see it on Facebook all the time people arguing what is what is not niche. I don't anticipate that that's going to get solved anytime soon. Number three, Baccarat Rouge 540 by Maison Francis Kirkjean. Very popular fragrance. Number four, Portrait of a Lady by Frederick Mall. Can't argue that either. Number five, Chergui by Serge Luton. Number six, Aventis by Creed. Number seven, Oud Wood by Tom Ford. Yet another private blend. Number eight, Grand Soir by Maison Francis Kirkjean. One of the best amber fragrances that you can buy. Number nine, Noir de Noir. Ugh. <laughs> Kind of messed that up by Tom Ford, another private blend. And then Jubilation 25 by Amouage rounding out the top 10. That is an extremely popular bunch of niche fragrances. Each one of those, that's kind of like your, your entry level starter pack of niche fragrances right there. You're gonna get a lot of different scent profiles there, a lot of stuff to digest if you're newer. And um, I can't really argue with those. Those are all very good fragrances in their own way. Uh, can't knock any of them. This video is running long, so we're gonna bust right through these next ones. Best Vetiver Perfume, the winner Encre Noir by Lalique. Extremely affordable from discounters like I talked about before. Uh, that's a great fragrance. I love it. I have, uh, I have the whole line. I actually even had the Encre Noir Parfum, which comes in a, a flat bottle, like a flat screw top. You don't see them very often. They're very expensive. And I got it from Beauty Kind which is a website that barely sells any fragrances, but they had some, 
for maybe 40 bucks or something ridiculous like that. Maybe I'll talk about that one day. Guerlain Vetiver, number two. Gray Vetiver, Tom Ford, number three. Then you have Terror Dermaz, Owen Intense Vetiver at four. Uh, Ancre Noir, All Extreme at number five. So those are the top five. You have more Terror Dermaz. You have Chanel Sycamore after that, which is an amazing fragrance. But we're gonna keep this moving to Best Aventus Alternative. Oh boy, my favorite category. That was sarcasm. <laughs> the winner was Armoff Club de Nuit Intense Man. That's not a huge surprise. Club de Nuit Intense Man is extremely popular, talked about all the time on YouTube, on Facebook groups, whatever. So that's number one. Uh, number two, Mont Blanc Explorer, the designer version of Aventus. Cedrat Boise, number three. You have Hasabat at number four. You have Aventus at number five. And then you've got some uh, your typical culprits in the Aventus clone category. You've got Pineapple Vintage Intense. You have Laventure. But, and this is extremely important, number eight, Gary. SpongeBob SquarePants. So awesome. Gary at number eight. And uh, this is actually my doing. <laughs> so I made a post on my YouTube page, on the community tab, and also on my Facebook group, urging people to vote for Gary, SpongeBob SquarePants, as the best Aventus alternative on the Reader's Choice Awards. Now, not too long after I did that, Gary jumped up from 13th place to eighth place. But then people started reporting me <laughs> to Fragrantica. So Fragrantica, uh, an editor at Fragrantica reached out to me and just said, hey, there are some people that are reporting you for urging people to vote for Gary. And they said, it's, it's okay, it's up to you what you wanna do. They were super cool. I'm not mentioning who it is, uh, just in case they don't want to be mentioned, but they were super cool. And I did go ahead and take down the posts because Gary had already moved into the top 10. And I actually expected the uh, Fragrantica editors to go in and, and remove Gary, but no. They let Gary stay in the top 10. This is Gary's moment to shine, you know? People are always, you know, using Gary as a meme and saying, oh, this fragrance smells like Gary, that fragrance smells like Gary. If you've been to Fragrantica long enough, you know what I'm talking about. He's always in the recommended section. Oh, it smells like Gary. But finally, he's being recognized. He has his moment in the sun. And it's great here because the actual write-up on Fragrantica says, this is a very practical category. I'm glad to see Gary winning again. Awesome. So everybody that voted for Gary, thank you. Thank you so much. And thank you to uh, to Fragrantica for having a sense of humor there. And one thing that I will say is funny is that Creed Aventus is one of the best Aventus alternatives. So, uh, okay. And then the next category, best Baccarat Rouge 540 alternative. Baccarat Rouge 540. That's the best alternative, number one. And guess what number three is? It's also Baccarat Rouge 540, except it's the Extrait de Parfum. So... Two of the top three Baccarat Rouge 540 alternatives are in fact just Baccarat Rouge 540. Which goes to tell you right there, if you wanna wear Baccarat Rouge 540, just wear Baccarat Rouge 540, am I right? Number two is Ariana Grande Cloud as far as BR540 alternatives. Number four, Mancera Instant Crush. And number five, Burberry Her by Burberry. We'll wrap this up really quickly with I Hate This Perfume. So this is the fragrance that the Fragrantica readers absolutely cannot stand. And number one, One Million by Paco Rabanne. Apparently Fragrantica readers hate the One Million. Number two, La Vie Espelle by Lancôme. Number three, Dior Sauvage. Number four, Office for Men. Number five, Paco Rabanne in Victus with the top five. What are you gonna do? So those are the fragrances that Fragrantica readers do not like so much. And that's gonna wrap up this video going over the Fragrantica Awards for 2019. I do really like when those awards come through each year because I like to see what places wear, even though it does seem that oftentimes the same fragrances from the year before will carry over a little bit, like in the uh, best fragrances of all time list. But that goes to show to an extent how popular those fragrances are and the impact that they have had. All right, guys, I know this ran long. Thank you so much for sticking around with me. Let me know in the comments below what you think about the Reader's Choice Awards this year. Again, shout out to Gary and shout out to Fragrantica for putting those on each year. Uh, thanks so much for your support, guys, and I'll see you again tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you guys. Thank you.